Is the Crown's position then, please, on release? Your Worship, we have agreed on a joint release uh, in the amount of $4,500. Right, where do we start here? Sean Wren had a criminal record longer than a short story, for goodness sake. He had broken parole, he was a dangerous and armed man, yet he was free and uh, allegedly shot two police officers, killing one of them. And there's now audio recording. You heard a part of it of a parole board hearing involving this man. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel Siegel, legal expert, lots of papers in front of her as well, <laughs> is here. How did we get this, by the way? Um, we asked for the, it was sent by the uh, province of Alberta. Okay, I didn't even know they were, they were all recorded. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's another clip, and I mean, it, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at what is said because they, these people sound as though they're speaking with authority. Mm -hmm. But when we actually know about this guy, they seem to know bugger all. Let, let, let's hear that next clip, please. The basis for the uh, um, Crown uh, opposing his release, as you'll note, he has a substantial record of very uh, serious criminal activity. What I can tell you, sir, is that he's been released on parole, had been doing well on parole, there'd be no uh, in compliance with all the conditions. Notwithstanding the record and the concerns I have, I'm satisfied he can be released on $2,000 cash deposit on terms that he keeps the peace and be of good behavior. Well, the judge was satisfied. Now, mm -hmm. I know judges have a difficult job and we can't blame them personally, but yes. the way he says it, I am confident, what gave him that confidence? Yeah, so this was the first one of uh, the first bail hearings um, that he had, and the Crown argued that he should actually not receive bail. So the Crown acted correctly in this yes. case. Um, and the defense said that because he was paying child support and he was gainfully employed, that he we should be giving him the benefit of the doubt and that bail should be given. Ultimately, the judge decided to go with that defense argument, and he was given bail in this case. Uh, he then had a, another uh, bail hearing for 15 new charges 15. Uh, later on. So committed after he was allowed on, on bail, when the judge said, I have confidence in. 15 charges. Yes, so 15 new charges, right. exactly. He was already on bail. There was another hearing. Um, and the Crown was represented by Edmonton Police Officer Constable Kwan. Yeah. Um, in Ontario, we don't really see that. We usually have a lawyer representing the Crown. Uh, in this case, in Alberta, they do. So it was a police officer. Um, in this hearing, there was a deal made between the Crown and the defense of a, an amount of $4,500 for his bail. And ultimately, that is what happened. Uh, the Crown, they made this deal, and he received bail once again. Is, is, forgive me, but is a cop qualified to do this? Yes, under in, on, in Alberta, this is common practice. They are allowed to rep, be representing the Crown. I would argue in this case, however, there was a lack of due diligence. If I was representing the Crown in this case, I would have brought forward one of the tools available to me, which was the Section 524 of the Criminal Code. Could you Code. read that to us? Yes. Section 524 says, where a justice is satisfied that there are reasonable grounds to believe that an accused has contravened or is about to contravene any summons, appearance notice, promise to appear, undertaking or recognizance that was issued or given to him or entered into by him, a justice shall cancel the summons, appearance notice, promise to appear, undertaking or recognizance, uh, and order that the accused be detained in custody unless the accused can show uh, that this is not justified. When I asked you, is a cop qualified? Now, I'm not trying, mm -hmm. I'm trying to read about the police here, but yeah. the police, police and lawyers do lawyering. Right. This sort of thing, he's not surely going to have the time to know all of this. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And like I talk about due diligence, uh, if this police officer would have simply just you know, brought this forward and ask that uh, the bail be denied based on a tool that is specified in our criminal code, mm. then he perhaps would still be in jail to this day. Um, we then, he was released uh, on bail in this circumstance. A couple of weeks later, uh, he was chased by the police uh, and ultimately the police ended up not Fine, not catching him, uh, and the next time that we saw him was unfortunately January at January seventeenth at the casino where he allegedly murdered. I, I, I've got to say, um, the cop argues the case. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, badly. The police failed to catch him. Uh, they, they didn't put a warrant out. I'm sure they did. They didn't. I mean, a lot of people have failed. A, a man is dead. Well, he's dead as well. But a, a lot of people seem to have failed in their job here. 
Yeah, and I, again, you know, the, the question is, was there due diligence in this case? Um, why were we giving this man the benefit of the doubt? Well, why you, was you, he given bail time after time? And this, he had so many previous uh, convictions yeah. and so many previous bail um, instances. He spent time in a federal penitentiary. Yeah. Like, those are not light charges. Richard, you've studied law in mm -hmm. two countries. Yes. You understand this and you, you know media as well. Mm -hmm. Due diligence, did it occur? No. I strongly believe that, uh, you know, although these charges were not, you know, violent offenses, um, we do classify offenses in, in our country. Well, but he, did he not assault his wife? He did, but uh, the specific uh, offenses that he was that were being debated in this bail hearing with the constable, um, they they were not violent offenses. Um, but that said, I think that when we look at his prior criminal history, and we saw that in the recording from the Crown in the earlier bail hearing, yeah. where they talk about this extensive uh, history that he should have enacted this part of the criminal code and that bail not only should have not been given in that case, but had been should have been revoked in the case before it. I just, I'm baffled. I, I thought yeah. there were gray areas that caused this problem. This is not gray. No. This is so black and white. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you.